inspired by my friend Amit Sheen, who did an entire talk on the subject. Today, I'm going to be looking at very simple CSS solutions to problems that people often write quite a lot of JavaScript to try and solve. Hello, my friend and friends. Thank you so much for being here for yet another video. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel, I help you fall madly deeply in love with CSS. And if I can't get you to fall in love with it, I'm hoping to at least help you be a little bit less frustrated by it. And I think looking at awesome, simple solutions that it provides that a lot of people don't know about is a nice way to start appreciating CSS a little bit more. So let's jump right into the code. And and as you can see, we have a bit of a demo page here that's set up. And what we're going to do is go through and look at a few different things, starting with this pseudo class, which is for the empty. And we're going to look at two examples of how this works and in situations where it can be handy. So one of them is uh, if you have like an error field for when you're filling out a form. So if somebody doesn't fill it out properly and they hit submit and then you have an error or a warning or something that comes in. Well, the easiest way to do that is to actually have something there already. So here in my HTML, I have this class of error, but it's blank waiting for some text to come into it. But obviously there's some default styling that's also being applied to this. And that doesn't look super nice because we get this red box that's waiting for text, which we don't actually want. So what we could do for something like that is we could come here and we have error, but we could also just say error and add the empty pseudo class to there and just put display none and it's vanished. You can see it's completely gone. But now if I hit my submit, you can see it pops back in. Now there's some issues with my styling just because uh, this and this are inline elements. So when that's not on there, if we refresh, they go next to each other and it's causing a layout shift, which isn't nice, but you get the idea of how that could be useful. Um, so you're just injecting content into something that's already on your page instead of having to insert HTML and other stuff in there. Another really useful use case for this is if you have user generated stuff. So you have like profiles that users are filling out or just other times where you might have like a CMS or something in place where you don't actually have full control on everything that's being put in there. Um, you know, the, the HTML is sort of locked in. So it's very possible that you end up with paragraphs or other things that somebody doesn't fill out. And because there's an extra paragraph here that actually is creating some extra spacing. So you can see here when I turn that paragraph off, uh, the spacing comes in and if I turn it back on, we get this extra empty space here just because this guy, when he filled out his profile, didn't actually put in a bio. So to be able to solve that, we could look for these empty paragraphs, but there is a got you here because uh, if I come in here and I say a P empty, uh, it's not actually going to fix the problem here because at the moment I have white space that's here. That sort of sucks. But if I remove that white space, so the space that was there, you can see it's actually fixed it. So let's put a space again. You can see I have extra space there. I'm gonna remove it, hit save, and you can see it vanishes away. Uh, the spec is actually changed. It was originally written, so this was not considered to be empty. They have changed that now, but we have to wait for the browsers to catch up on that. So eventually this might not be something we have to worry about, but for the time being, it really needs to be completely empty. Uh, the other thing is you might be going, well, here I'm looking for my paragraphs that are empty. Can I just look for anything that's empty? But mm, you can see that causes some issues because all of my images have also disappeared. But if you know there's some things that you don't want included in here, we could say not SVG, uh, image, uh, picture, and you could list out all the different elements that you don't want to be included. And then so anything that's not an SVG, an image or a picture right now will be a display none. Maybe there's a few other things that we need to add in there as well, but it could be a nice way just to sort of cover all your bases. And you can see, oh, we need <laughs> including my inputs and other things because you can see the input has also disappeared. So do be careful if you use this as a blanket statement, but again, it could be useful in some situations. Next up, let's scroll down a little bit and look at target. So for the target, what we're going to do is I'm going to turn on uh, some links here at the top of my page. And so if I click on share, it's going to bring me down to this area on my page. And actually, let's fix this up really, really fast. <laughs> um, let's just go HTML. We're going to do a um, scroll behavior of smooth. And let's also do a scroll uh, padding top of let's say, I don't know, seven rem or something, just so we have a bit of space there. So when I go down, it brings me to here. And I was actually on a page recently that had this type of thing set up where there was multiple links. And if I clicked any of them, it brought me to this entire section, a lot like this where all three things, and there was probably about 10, but I didn't know, like I wanted the information on share. And then it brings me to something where there's lots of information. 
So how do I know like share is actually what I want? So we could actually use target for that. And I'm gonna use just general target like this, but we could make it a bit more specific if we wanted to as well. But let's say we do target and then uh, let's do an outline of, I don't know, five pixels solid. I'm gonna do red just so it really stands out. You can see there it is. And also let's do an out, outline offset of like five pixels or something like that. So now if I'm on the page and I click store and sync, it's gonna bring me there and it's showing me it's like highlighting it in red. Uh, we could also change the background color of it. You can do lots of different things with this. So you can target the different things as you're clicking on them and it highlights it there. And there's actually some really clever tricks you can do with target as well. Uh, but it can be a nice one to highlight something that somebody has clicked on if they're getting scrolled to a specific place on the page. Uh, in this case, even if you wanted something a little bit more subtle, if we come and look at these, uh, these are have H3s. So I could do target and H3, or if you had a title class or something like that, and you could actually just have it highlight the title or change the color of the title. So if you have a blog or something like that and somebody shares the link, even, right, somebody shares uh, a link like this, when you go to that and they visit, not only is it going to be in the right place, but it's gonna be highlighting the title or whatever the target is for what you wanted. So another one that can be kind of useful. And the last thing that I wanna look at, and this is some of my favorite ones, are only child and only of type. Uh, they're very related, so I'm counting this as one tip, but really it covers a couple of different things. Uh, and I use this idea of like a testimonial here, just because you might get different types of testimonials that are coming in. And instead of having to rely on a whole bunch of different classes, and then you're coming in here and you're doing like a testimonial, and then with a class of single line of text or large text, whatever, you know, you, you have like this design pattern where if it's one line, it should look one way. If it's a picture with one line, it should look another way. And if it's a picture with multiple lines, it should look a different way. And we can do all of that with this. So if I say my block quote, and then inside there, I say P only child, we could say font size on this is really big just because it's all by itself. It needs to be front and center and it's only targeting this one right here because it's a paragraph that's inside my block quote and it's the only child. There's no other children in there. And in this case, if we look here, it's the only child. So only this one is being targeted. We could also take a look at this one right here and we could say block quote P and this one would be only of type. And let's do something a little bit different. So I'm gonna change the color just so we can see that it's going to work. Uh, let's do orange, it won't look nice, but it's going to target this one and this one because in both cases, they're the only of type. It's the only child, which by default makes it only of type. But in this case, we have an image and we have only one paragraph. So it's going to target this paragraph as well, but it's leaving these ones alone down here. And of course you could do a uh, block quote P not only of type and then on that we could also give that its own style as well so maybe in this case the font size becomes 1.25 ram or something i don't know uh but it gets its own styling i think that's what it already was actually there we go you can see it got a little bigger right there so we can target things in different situations and this might leave you wondering what if we could change the entire style of what's happening depending on what is going on inside of it what if you know, what if I need to change the parent based on if there's only one paragraph and stuff like that. And that is coming with the has selector. It's already pushed. It's already available in Safari. We're just waiting for the other browsers to catch up on that. I don't have any content on has yet, but if you'd like to know how that would work and you'd like something now, even though we can't use it yet, just leave a comment down below to let me know. And if you enjoyed this video, you'd probably enjoy this one right here where I look at three other CSS tips and tricks that make your life a little bit easier as well. And with that, I wanna say a very big thank you to my supporters of awesome, Jan, Johnny, Patrick, Simon, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.